All right, this is John from MK1615 Evangelism Team, and uh, we're out here today at uh, Fort Lauderdale Beach, and uh, I just ran into a gentleman. His name is Galen. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Hey, Galen. Listen, I wanted to ask you two questions. My first question is, are you a He fan? Yes. You're a He fan? You can say that. Yeah. Uh, who are you rooting for tonight, the Heat or the Celtics? The Heat. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you live here? Uh, no, I'm not from around here. Where are you from? Atlanta. Oh, you're from L.A., so you're just down here on vacation? Yeah. Do you think that this kind of looks like L.A. or, or, or uh, like the beach area or, or not at all? Yes. Yeah. What do you, you think is missing? Maybe the mountains or something like that? Or what? Uh, some of the little stuff that's in the water. Oh, okay, cool. So you're having a good time here? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you're going to watch the Heat game tonight? Making sure I do. All right, good, man. I'm going to be watching it, too, man. I, I hope they win. We'll see what happens. Second question I want to ask you is, what do you think happens when we die? I mean, we're here today. We're having a good time. But one day we're going to die. And either we go to heaven. There's, they, people believe there's a heaven. There's a hell. What are your thoughts on, like, you know, when we die? Where do you think you're going to go? Heaven. Heaven? That's cool. Why? Well, it just just because... It, on this, it just because certain people do certain things doesn't necessarily dictate their life and how they're going to be later. So you could go rob, say for instance, you could go rob a store right now and be the and then be the owner of a huge charity. That that kind of stuff plays perspective. So it kind of evens out. It's like a, a balanced scale. You can do bad, but you can make up bad by doing some good things. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, cool. So would you say that you're a good person? Yes. Okay. You know, Galen, and I appreciate your honesty. One of the ways we can know for sure we're a good people is we can look at really how God sees us. Because ultimately, Galen, he determines who's good, right? Yep. The Bible says that one day you and I are going to die, and we're going to stand before our Creator, God, for judgment. Now, the standard that God is going to use is His Ten Commandments. Galen, have you ever heard of the Ten Commandments? Yes, sir. That's God's moral law that He's given to man to, uh, to abide by. Now, we'll just go through a couple and see how good you are in the eyes of God. One, one of the commandments says that we shouldn't lie, bear false witness. Have you ever lied before? Uh, you, you know what? I think people... I think everybody has once in their life to lie. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. So you've lied, correct? Yes. Okay. Here goes another one. He says that we shouldn't take God's name in vain. Have you ever used God's name as a curse word? No. You ever said God, you know, the D word or, oh, God, out of anger? You know, maybe you got upset and angry ever? No. Oh, I, I commend you for that because you shouldn't do that. The Bible makes it very clear that it's wrong. Let's go through another one. He says that we shouldn't steal. Now, have you ever taken anything in your life that didn't belong to you? The value really doesn't matter. It could be something small, downloaded music off the Internet you knew was illegal. Anything like that ever? Uh, actually, I, ha I do have a funny story for that one. I have... <laughs> I go sometimes, I, I, like you see, I have braces. Yeah, yeah. I'll go in my mom's room and take a like a stick of gum. Cause yeah. I love, I'm a, I'm a chewer, so you're, you're a gum chewer. Okay. I'll go in my mom's room and take a piece of gum. Okay. So you've stolen something in your life before? I could, even if it's something small, cheated on a test at school, any of those things? I, I take education very serious. Okay. Well, that's good. I commend you. So you've had taken something in your life, right? Yes. Okay. And what do you call somebody who steals? Uh, if I stole, I'd be I'd be what? A thief? Yeah. Okay. And if I lied, I'd be what? A liar. A liar. There you go. So bright and bright so far, you've admitted that you're a liar and a thief. I've broken those many a times in myself, so you're not the only one in the boat. Let's go through one more. He says that we shouldn't commit adultery. Now, you're not married, are you? No. Okay. But Jesus said, you have heard that it was said of old, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman just to lust after her has committed adultery within his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman and had a sexual thought? Yes. Yeah, you're a human being, right? I mean, blood runs through your vein. You've broken that, right? Yes. Yeah, so check this out. By your own admittance, you're a liar, a thief, and a blasphemer. And that's how God sees you. And we've only went through a few of the Ten Commandments. So if you were to stand before God on Judgment Day and he says, Galen... I, I see every thought, every word, and every deed. You've broken my law many times. How would he find you, innocent or guilty, for breaking God's law, the Ten Commandments? Well, on God's law, I think he, I'd be finding guilty. Well, yeah, it's like if you, we have, we have sec, earthly laws here. If we break those laws and we get caught, 
were guilty, right? Yes. Okay. So check this out. In, so you'd be guilty. So there were, where would you be going? In the beginning of the conversation, you told me you go to heaven. But after I showed you you've broken God's laws, where would you be going now? Down there. I, I don't like to say the word. I know. But you know what? Did you know that Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven? He tried to warn people of hell. And you, that's where you would be headed, though, because you're a lawbreaker in God's eyes, right? A lying thief, adulterer. And we've only went through a few of the commandments. Does that concern you, though, that you'd go to hell? Yes, it very does. Yeah, man, Galen, I don't want you to go to hell, man. And that's why I'm here trying to talk to you and do this interview. And, by the way, do I have your permission to do this interview? Yes, yes, you okay, do. cool. Listen, um... So what are you, th you going to do with, how are you going to make it right with God on the day of judgment? I'm going to make sure I do, I make sure, first of all, make sure I understand the Ten Commandments before I go out and try to be proactive with it. And when I, once I fully understand what they mean, i am make sure I will not do anything to break it. But check this out. Let's say, how old are you now? Uh, 17 going on. Okay. Let's say that from this day forward, you never sinned again, Okay. You said, I'm going to keep all the laws, all the commandments, but you still have to be accountable for what you've done in the past. You see what I'm saying? So you just trying to do good things in the future is not going to make up for what you did in the past. You've broken God's law. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. It'd be like a murderer standing before a judge and say, yeah, you judge, I know I murdered that guy, but you know what I gave to Red Cross and I did a lot of things to help a lot of people over the years and I really am trying to change my life. The guy would say, well, I appreciate that, the judge, but he says, you still broke the law. I have to hold you accountable. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And you're going to be accountable to God. Now, do you know what God did for you, Galen, that you wouldn't have to go to hell, but you could go to heaven? Die for us on the cross. There you go, man. The Bible says, for God loved you so much, loved all of us, that he sent his son Jesus to be a fine payer for us. Jesus didn't break any of the laws. He lived a perfect life that you and I could never live. He went to the cross and he died on that cross for si the sins of the world, for humanity. And we could be forgiven by God the Father through what God the Son did on that cross. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Does that sound like good news? Yes. Yeah, because you were headed to hell, but now you have a Savior that will save you from hell, and that is Christ, right? Yes, sir. Now, here's the most important thing, and a lot of people don't know this. How are you going to receive that free gift of eternal salvation? What do you think you have to do to, to, to get it? Right with God. How do you do that? Well, f first, first, you can't, what you can't do is um, what I like to call a two-time person. You can't say you can't be like a person that you know is gonna go to church every Sunday and then the night before clubbing, yeah. drinking, you know. I, I hear you, a hypocrite, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Well, let me. No, that's not really it. Let me tell you, and I'm gonna help you to understand this because Galen is so important. Right now, you're on a road that's headed to hell because you violated God's laws. You've angered God, but God will save you if you repent. Repent. That means confess your sin to God and repent. Turn from your life of sin. Turn from your life of wrongdoing and put your faith and trust in Jesus alone for your salvation, for eternity. If you do that, the Bible says God will save you. He'll give you a new heart with a new desire. And the things you used to do, Galen, you're going to be like, you know what? I don't want to live that life anymore because I've repented of my sin and I put my faith and trust in Jesus. And now I want to follow him. Does that make any sense? Yes. If you were on an airplane and there was a parachute on your seat, okay, and you knew the plane was going to crash, would, you, would it do you any good to believe in it or would you have to put it on? Uh, make sure I believe in it. Make sure it works. And you'd have to put it on, right? In order when you jump, it'll save you, right? Yeah. Well, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do that, God will save you, Galen. You have to repent of your sin and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Galen, thank you so much, and I will be praying for you, and I'm going to give you a gospel track that talks about exactly what I was telling you about, okay? All right, thanks again.